How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I want to share with you a setting that we found in the inverter for our RV that has an amazing feature built into it. And it might shape the way that you buy other gear for your RV. And this is a little feature that goes beyond the input current limit, and it's now a dynamic current limit and what that might mean for your inverter and the other gear you might buy. This setting takes it to the next level of why we picked this inverter. We picked this inverter because it has a line one and a line two, which is perfect for our 50 amp RV, being able to use the inverter. It has an internal switch that when you lose power, it immediately switches over and starts inverting and you don't even lose power. It's a decent size that we can run some of those larger items individually, or we can just be able to utilize the stuff inside the RV that we would like to. And one of the big things that this inverter does is it gives us the power assist. So it's a 50 amp RV when we're plugged into 30 amps or 20 amps or 15 amps, we put that in and it will not draw more than that. And it'll supply the, the power necessary through that to the RV and then boost above that. If we're gonna draw more than 30 amps, it'll boost it so that we can have more things running inside the RV when we need to. And then when we don't, it charges those batteries. So those are the core features of why we have this inverter, but this dynamic current limit is a different level and gives us more capabilities. It kind of only has one drawback, but let's get into what it is. This setting is something that when you have a weak source of power coming in, say a generator, it's going to be able to help you out more as you turn on larger pieces of equipment. So if you turn on the AC and it's just a hard sucker punch to that power draw that's needed, it might bog down that, that generator and then you lose power and then the inverter's trying to kick in and catch it. And then it's just a, a system that's kind of set up for failure if you don't have a generator big enough to be able to run some of the larger things inside of your RV. What this dynamic does is it says, this is what the power is at. I have my input current limit and it's up here. But if you turn on anything else, I'm gonna have that inverter help. And then I'm gonna slowly transfer that over to the power source. So if you have a generator, it has time to ramp up and get there rather than just getting sucker punched and not able to catch that load. So you can still set your input current limit for the, the capabilities of your input source, but it's gonna dynamically change so that it doesn't overload it with a large draw in the beginning and let it ramp up to get to where it needs to. The way that they put it is the thought behind this is when a generator is running at a low load, it cannot switch to a full load immediately and needs some time to increase the power. So let me show you how I tested this, but this allows you to have a smaller generator that may not be able to take those large loads in the beginning. So you can buy a smaller generator, maybe save money, save weight, save on the hassle of moving a larger generator around and be able to run the larger things in your RV without having it bogged down. So to test this out, we use a 2000 watt generator in the Florida heat. So it is a very small inverter generator. And you can see that it started assisting and then it slowly transferred all that load to the line one input. It's a pretty impressive setting and capability of this inverter to be able to do that. It just has the one drawback, but building your system with this inverter and having uh, some lithium batteries to go along with it, I'll put links down in the description to the, the gear that I prefer and that I would pick, whether it's Battleborn or Lion Energy or a budget lithium battery. Uh, building your system with this amount of capability can now lead you to a generator that might be smaller. Now with our inverter set up, this is probably a bigger generator than I would pick today. This is a 3,400 watt generator. We brought it along because it runs off of propane and we didn't wanna to have to bring any gasoline along, but I would probably do the 2,500 watt inverter generator below this one. It's easier to carry around. I don't need one this large with an inverter. Usually we use this mainly just to be able to charge up the batteries, but with the inverter the way that it is, we can start the AC, we can do so many more things without needing a larger generator. The other thing that you could decide to get or not get is the Microwear Easy Start to help your AC start under something like this with a generator. But with the inverter, I know that it can start it without the Microwear Easy Start. I'm still glad we have it. I would still choose to put it on there. It just takes a, a little bit of that stress off of starting the AC with everything else involved. So, uh, but those are the things that you can decide on whether you want it or not. But that's really all the, the positives that go along with having an inverter like that with those capabilities. 
But now that brings us to the one drawback. And this is a setting that you have to go into that is usually only available for the installer and going into those advanced settings. It would be great if we had that available inside the, the Bluetooth app in your phone, uh, but I understand why they remove these advanced features from just being accessible all the time because you can mess up things inside this inverter going through some of those different settings and setting it up differently. It needs to be something that's set up. But this is a feature that would be nice to be able to turn on when you're using a generator and then turn it off when you're going back to a solid grid solution. So for me, unless I'm gonna be running the AC, if I'm just gonna be using it normally as I would just to be able to charge up the batteries inside of the RV, it's not a setting that I have to enable. But it's really nice to be able to have that in your back pocket, use it when you need it, have that capability, and not worried about bogging down a generator that might be a weak source of power coming into the RV. So I think that's gonna do it for today. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.